Beginning with the Land Ordinance of 1785, the national government decided to divide the public domain into a rectangular system of townships, ranges, and sections. The beginning of the records for the federal land, or what we know of as the Western Territory, began when Congress first established the rectangular survey system. Congress, when they started to acquire the land in the Western Territories in the 1800s, had to develop a way of settling that land. When they went out and on top of a high knoll, they established an initial point. From that initial point, they drew a direct east-west line and a direct north-south line. The east-west line was the baseline. The north-south line was the principal meridian. From that initial point, each six-mile square was assigned a township number north or south from the baseline and a range number east or west of the principal meridian. Each of these six mile squares was further subdivided into 36 sections of one square mile each. The surveyor would start on the bottom of the township and he would work north uh, one section at a time laying a marker at every mile and every half mile. When the surveyor sent his notes in, they actually they drew three hand-drawn plats because they didn't have duplicating procedures like we have today. There's a lot of history there because when the surveyor was out there, he not only told us the distances and the coordinates in which to follow to reach from point to point, but at the end of his notes, he told us what was there, what he had found on his trails. And if you follow the survey pattern, you can tell when settlement occurred throughout the United States as the survey progressed across the western part of the states. Unfortunately, America's frontier landscape, its mountains, its plains and valleys, was not very compatible with a pat rectangular system that looked so orderly on a flat sheet of paper. Surveying the public lands, the fracturing of the frontier along township lines has never been an easy task. The surveyor's life has often been fraught with hardship and danger. I could see this bear coming down this where we had worked. Well, I I didn't know what to do. Uh, so I climbed, climbed a tree that was probably about 25 feet. And there was a couple of trees right close to us, so I could jump over and get over on the other tree. If he came up, came to me. He did come down. All the way down, I shouted and hollered. He just came, kept coming down and came down to the tree and got up on his haunches and, and looked up at me and finally wandered off. I gave him plenty of time to get the hell out of there before I got, came down off the tree. The typical crew was usually five or six men on the crew at that time, which is about the same as nowadays, although I think they're smaller because of the newfangled equipment. But you usually had two or three axemen to cut the line out, at least two in the mountains. You had what you call, what they call the principal assistant, and this is what I was for quite a number of years. He kept the notes, kept the measurements, and so forth. Then you had a, a drag chainman who was up ahead. Then you had a flagman and a surveyor running the show. Now, that was a typical crew. Then, to back it up, you'd have a cook, maybe assistant cook, and you would have a mule skinner, so to speak. Usually, there was two crews in a camp. We usually used a, in most cases, a five-chain tape. We used to have to cut our line through and blaze our trees, as it says in the manual. There's no doubt that our measurements and our bearings aren't as good as we have today with the new equipment that we have. For that type of work, at the time we did it, it's not bad at all, considering. At that time, we were the old general land office. One of the big jokes around the country was, we finally got some trucks, some of those old trucks that People wouldn't ride in nowadays. Didn't have springs, I don't think. You used to have GLO printed on the side of the truck, you know. People said, 
what's GLO, they'd ask us. We'd say, good looking outfit. <laughs>